bees. Bees, bees, bees are in the air. Most people don't give bees a second thought unless they're swatting them at a garden party. But is that really polite? Let's get beekeeping. We are in the home of over 300,000 bees. The postman calls it Mark and Meredith Cowens in Walters Falls, Ontario. What made you get into being? When we bought the farm, one of our old sheds had a ton of old bee equipment. And it actually had some little old hives left on there. And for a while, my husband and I just kept looking at it and wondering, oh, should we do this, should we not do it? And then we just decided, let's go for it. Let's revive these hives. And it's probably one of the best things we've done for the farm. And it's been the best thing I've done for myself on many, many levels. So today we're gonna check to see if any of the hives need additional supers so they can start storing extra honey for us. I have a smoker here and it probably isn't even necessary for a beautiful day like today. And probably these gloves are not. These are not aggressive bees, but you, we are going into their house. Mm -hmm. So we should pay respect. Bees pick up on everything that you're feeling. Okay. So it's best to go, if you're in a bad mood, don't do beekeeping. Okay, don't. gotcha. Yeah. How can you have bad mood when you live out here? <laughs> this is true. What you do is you just sort of put a little bit of smoke in the front here, mm -hmm. just to let the bees know that you're here. So when you wow. crack open a hive, this is, you lift it up the cover, and it's really important when you first open up the hive to make sure that the beautiful queen mm -hmm. is not here. These are all the worker bees. Okay. And all the worker bees are female. That is correct. This is a matriarchy. We okay. are entering a matriarchy. Okay. Yes. I always think that's kind of cool too. This is a, a super mm -hmm. and this is what the honey is stored in. Okay. And the bees work on these frames. Okay. And this is actually a beautiful frame. Okay. Bees like it where it's nice and dark inside. So when you put down a new frame, the comb will start to sort of a nice golden color, mm -hmm. but the more they work on it, the darker it becomes, and they love it this way. I'm just going to open this up again, making sure that we're paying respect to the queen, that mm -hmm. she's not busy. Well, look at all of them. Each phase of the bee's life, they have different activities to do. It's not till the end that they start to leave the hive and go to uh, collect nectar to make honey. This hive looks like it's just about ready to have another box put on top. Because what happens is if the bees run out of space to put honey, mm -hmm. they'll look for a new home. So we can hear the bees, and that's their wings. And I read that it, they beat their wings 200 times per second. And they fly at 24 kilometers an hour. Yeah, it's amazing. If you look into the sky right now, you can see them busy oh, yeah. working. Just, just, And they're pre-programmed. They know exactly where there's some nice honey flow. So they're telling all the other bees where to go. They pack just the right amount of food to head out to that destination and they go and get it and bring it back to the hive. So this is what it looks like when it's finished. This is them filling up all the combs with their honey, okay. and then they cap it off. Actually, here's a drone bee. Okay. That's one of the few boys. Okay. And you can see he's a little bit bigger. And now and will these done. bees be the ones flying into the beehive? Actually, they'll be coming in and they'll be coming in and depositing it into this so mm -hmm. that the other bees can finish working on it as well. Wow, it's a real big team effort. It is a team effort. And it just seems like it got busier since we got here. It is. Well, I think they're probably a little annoyed by the fact that we uh, were here. Thank heavens it's warm. Yep. So the temperature's probably not too disruptive. But I'm sure they're like, why is there light in here? After seeing the bees in the colony and how great they work together, my big fear is, and I've been reading a little bit about this, is they're disappearing. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Yeah, the bee numbers are going down. And... Uh, there's no question the bees are immunologically compromised right now and there are a lot of factors that the bees are uh, experiencing to cause them to suffer but the number one that we can really see is something called the varroa mite. The bees are having a hard time dealing with this mite and there are protocols for us to help keep the numbers down and fortunately living where we live we have very cold winters mm -hmm. and yes there are downsides to the cold winters but the upside is is it keeps this varroa mite in smaller numbers it doesn't mean we can take a backseat attitude to this mm -hmm. problem it just means that we're um, not experiencing some of the problems as serious as some of the southern parts of uh, north america are experiencing with these bees when i store honey it solidifies yes this is a yes this is natural <laughs> this is very natural i agree no what temperature should you melt that honey back again to a liquid? Well, you don't want to take it past 103 degrees because that is the top temperature of the hive. People have to realize bees keep their honey warm because they have to keep it molten. They can't have hard honey in the hive because it wouldn't be easy for them to eat it. So uh, there are ways to do this. Just put your honey into some warm water, a double boiler or just a cup of hot water and let your, uh, your honey get soft. But I've even developed a love for 
hard in honey. I'll tell you when you're baking and things, mm -hmm. it's much easier at times just to scoop it into your measuring cups. But I guess each honey has its own purpose for different things. Uh, so I don't mind hardened honey. It's part of uh, it's part of honey's natural process. You've come up with two new products. Yes. We have a ginger lemon elixir, mm -hmm. and then we have a ginger syrup. I wish I could take credit for being the first person on the planet to blend <laughs> ginger with honey, but I'm not. But I think hopefully I'm one of the first people to put it into a product that maintains the integrity of the ingredients and that um, gets people interested in eating ginger. Because ginger is one of these gifts from heaven that has been put on this earth that has such great value for these human bodies that we have mm -hmm. and you know I think it's a food like many things that is overlooked and you don't realize right what's sitting there in your grocery store can do so much good for you and um, and I don't want to scare people away with all the good stuff about ginger but it tastes great so and when you mix it with honey it's a mean combination. What I think is important because this is a summer version of ginger mm -hmm. and this is a winter version of ginger. You can eat them any time of year but you'll find that this one has a real cooling effect on you and this one has a real warming effect on you. I cook this in a way that maintains the integrity of the honey too. I'm not boiling down the honey mm -hmm. in the process so that um, you don't get any good qualities of honey because as you know if you cook down honey um, you kind of lose some of its treats. I see honey you know, up on the shelf, it's it's five ninety nine. Then I see the honey that is organic or raw, and it's seven ninety nine. Mm -hmm. You know, what's the difference between buying the beehive honey, which isn't there's nothing wrong with that, or buying like the organic or raw honey? Well, I'm a huge advocate for people eating their local honey. So okay. take a uh, take a little drive into the country, mm -hmm. and one of the first things you'll find are local beekeepers. And eat your local honey because that's where you get all the medicinal value. Is mm -hmm. uh, the local honey. Um, has all the things that you're looking for to the flowers and the trees are all found in that honey which helps with your allergies because in small amounts that helps to build the antibodies in your system. Right. In Gray County I think produces some of the most beautiful honey in the entire world. Instead of sh taking this beautiful liquid gold that we you know ship out and it gets blended with all sorts of other honey we get to keep our honey local and we get to use it in a product that keeps the integrity of the honey intact. Yep. So you're still getting your raw, beautiful honey, and we're making it, we're blending it with lemon and blending it with ginger, whole foods. And, um, and yeah, we, may, we, we should probably just take a moment to introduce the third person in this interview. This is Hobbs, and this is, he's part of the farm as mm -hmm. well. And we're including him in this interview, I think, because it's important because he's the new face of this, this product that we're drinking. This is ginger syrup, and, we, and because this has a lot of kick, it has ginger in it. Yeah. He's the representation of the kick. We're gonna make something fantastic and summery, oh, sweet awesome. and hot, okay? Amazing. So we're gonna take some fresh peaches, we're gonna roast the peaches, so that's gonna bring all the sweetness and goodness out of the peaches, and then we're gonna drizzle a little bit of your syrup over it just to finish it. We're gonna put a little bit of mascarpone cheese on the plate, put the warm peach on it, and it will just be a thing of beauty. I'm so excited to try it, <laughs> all right. Mm. Mm. How good is that? It's wonderful. Mm. Pure flavor. Maybe now we'll think twice before swatting that bee at the next garden party. Here's to great being. Oops, I mean eating, because you're worth it. <laughs>